Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and this is a A-level tricky question. And this question is from an Edexcel uh, specimen paper, and it is a statistics question, and it is really tricky. So um, give it a go yourself first, and then watch the solution to see if you get it right. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, we have a particular type of bulb. Uh, 36% grow into plants with blue flowers and the remaining grow into plants with white flowers. Bulbs are sold in a mixed bag of 40. He selects five bags, find the probability that fewer than two of these bags will contain more bulbs that grow into blue than grow into white. Okay, so what we need to do first, we need to set two distributions. The first one is going to look at how many blue flowers we could get in one bag. So it's going to be binomially distributed because there's only two options, blue or white. And the number of trials will be 40 because there are 40 bulbs in each bag. And the probability that we're going to get a single blue will be 0 0.36. And what we want to work out is we want to work out what's the chance of getting a bag which has more bulbs that grow into blue than grow into white. So I need to work out the probability that x is greater than or equal to 21 blue bulbs. Because if it were 20 blue bulbs, then that wouldn't be more blue bulbs than white bulbs. So I need 21 or more. Okay, so we can use this, um, we can use our calculator to work this probability out. And we get a probability of 0 0.024. Okay, now what we need to do is set up a second distribution where we look at the bags. So I will label that distribution Y, and that will also be binomially distributed. And there are five bags that we are going to be checking. And I want the probability to be whether or not we have a bag which is more than half full of blue flowers. And we know that probability, we've just worked it out, is 0 0.024. So what am I actually looking for? I'm looking for fewer than two bags containing this condition of having more than half blue. So fewer than two means just 0 and 1. So I'd write that as the probability of y is less than or equal to 1. And we get the answer of 0 0.995. Okay, great. Let's move on to the second question. Right, part B says that Maggie takes a random sample of n bulbs and using a normal approximation, the probability that more than 244 of these bulbs um, will grow into blue flowers is this. Right, so normal approximation, we need to use a distribution which is found in your formula booklet of the mean NP and the variance NP1 minus P. And because the probability of the uh, bulbs turning into blue flowers is 36%, we can write this distribution as um, the probability multiplied by the number of trials is the average, which is 0.36n. And the variance, I could just do a quick calculation of 0.36 multiplied by 1 minus 0.36. And that gives me 0. 2304n. Okay, next one I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this distribution and we have that 244 would be here and I want the um, I want more than 244. So I want this area here and that's telling me that the probability of that area um, is 0 0.0521. Now, also, with the normal approximation, because we are approximating a binomial, 
and binomial only has discrete values so only like whole numbers um, the normal distribution is continuous so it could take any number even including decimals even though of course you can't have a decimal value of a bulb but because we're approximating we're going to have to um, imagine we could and what is the smallest number which would round to more than 244 well the answer to that is 244.5 because any less than that it would round down to 244 which is not what we want because we want more than 244 and anything more than that would round to more than 244 so that's the number that we're going to have to use okay so what we're going to need to do now is we need to work, uh, draw a standard normal distribution curve and if we match it up like this um, we will have a z value here which we'll need to try and work out and the probability region will be the same and with the standardized normal distribution we have a mean of 0 and we have a, a sigma value of 1 okay so let's go to our calculator to work out this uh, z value so we do menu statistics we do distribution uh, normal and inverse normal and we are looking at the tail to the right as you can see in the diagram uh, that's the area we want that is the standard deviation that is the mu value so we get a z value of 1.625 so 1.625 okay great so now what we can do is we can use uh, these two distributions and the formula that links them which is z is equal to x minus mu over sigma and this is going to help us work out mu or sigma from the original distribution and mu and sigma have our um, n in them which is what we're trying to solve for so we can write that 1.625 is our z value our x value is 244.5 minus mu which is this one here 0.36n all over the standard deviation which is the square root of the variance so the square root of 0.2304n okay to solve this equation I'm going to need a little bit more space so I am going to multiply up by that denominator uh, which will give me root 0 0.2304 times by root n. So what I do is I split that denominator up into root 0 0.2304 times root n. And that's equal to 244.5 uh, minus 0 0.36n. I can do that calculation to simplify that left-hand side. Um, I can do 1.625 multiplied by the square root of 0 0.2304 and that gives me 0 0.78 uh, square root n uh, is equal to 244.5 minus 0 0.36n I can move it all to one side to get this plus 0 0.78 n to the half rather than root n minus 244.5 and that's equal to zero now what I've spotted here is this is a hidden quadratic and I'll show you the way that I spot them so the constant term here essentially is n to the zero and the term here at the end is n to the one now whenever you have the power going from 0 and then in this case to a half and then to 1 if the jump is the same like that then you can use the hidden it's a hidden quadratic basically so 0 a half 1 the jump is the same between the powers 
So you can solve it just like a quadratic. So I could say let um, uh, n to the half equal x. Then squaring both sides gives me that n is equal to x squared. And I could write 0 0.36 x squared plus 0 0.78 x minus 244.5 equals 0. I can then go to my calculator and solve that quadratic by going to menu, equation, polynomial, degree 2, and we have 0 0.36, 0 0.78, 0 0.78 and minus 244.5 and that gives me 25 and the negative one we can't have n negative so n is 25 or not n sorry that's the that's solving for x which is n to the half which is 25 so therefore, squaring both sides, n is actually 6, 2, 5. Uh, I hope you found that useful. Um, please do like and subscribe if you did. Uh, in the comments, let me know what you'd like me to do next. And bye for now.